How's it going, Omis? I'm Stephen Iwashki from Adventure Yoga, and this is a Yoga Pose Breakdown for Tadasana, also known as Mountain Pose. I'll talk to you a bit more about this as we go through the Pose Breakdown, but Mountain Pose is so much more than come and stand at the top of your mat. We're going to work today to invoke the power and strength and stability of a mountain in your body, in your own practice. If that sounds interesting, please unroll your mat, stand on your mat, and I'll meet you there in just a few seconds. Now, Tadasana is so much more than just stand at the top of your mat, but we'll start there. Make your feet hip distance apart. Hip distance apart is roughly two fists apart. So if you bring your fists together and then fold forward, bend your knees, bring your fists to the ground between your feet, that's going to give you a really good measurement of feet hip distance apart. There's a really specific measurement as well, which is the center of your ankle or the center of your heel. Make that as wide as your sit bones, those little bony bits at the bottom of your pelvis. And that's also going to be feet hip distance apart. The other thing we want to do with our feet is make them parallel to each other. This is to help with the alignment set up in your knees, in your hips, and in the rest of your body. Feet parallel to each other is roughly second toe pointed straight ahead, but if you're anything like me, your second toe isn't exactly straight. So there is a very specific instruction for this as well. If you think about the center of your ankle, and then the base of your second toe, and imagine that you're drawing lines along your feet connecting those two points. You want to make those lines parallel to each other, and that's feet parallel. So feet hip distance apart, feet parallel to each other. As you get more advanced in your yoga practice, you might want to tattoo those lines on your feet. I've got two friends who actually have tattoos on their feet showing them feet parallel guidelines. Yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do as you advance your practice. One of the other things you can do is bring your feet together. I generally instruct feet hip distance apart for Tadasana. It's nice to have a slightly wider base here for more support. And also, we don't just stand in Tadasana usually. We go on to other poses like Uttanasana or the forward fold. And when you do Uttanasana with your feet together, it's more strain on your hamstrings, and a lot of us have tight hamstrings. It's also harder to tip your pelvis forward and get the flexion at your hip that you need for forward fold. If your feet are slightly apart, you can move your pelvis a little bit more. You have a little more space to lengthen your hamstrings. And so I generally instruct feet hip distance apart. It's up to you if you choose feet together or feet hip distance apart, but those are some reasons why you might choose feet hip distance apart. They're both Tadasana. Straighten your legs, straighten your arms, and stretch up through your spine. This is a really good foundation for Tadasana. But we're going to take it a little further because this is a yoga pose breakdown. So I want you to engage the upper fronts of your legs or your quads. And I want you to engage your hamstrings or the upper backs of your legs. So to engage your quads, pull up on your knees so that your legs straighten. You might feel your calf muscles engage as well and your feet engage into the ground, but that will help engage your quads, or you might think of them as your thighs. Pull up on your knees to engage the fronts of your legs. Just like I'm doing, touching can help you see if the muscles are engaging. To engage your hamstrings or the upper backs of your legs, again, touch can help to see if they're engaging. There are a couple of instructions that I really like to help with this. The first is, imagine that you're bringing your heels up to touch your butt, and energetically lift your heels up to your butt. If that works to engage your hamstrings, awesome, keep that. But for some people, I know that that instruction doesn't really make sense. So the other instruction I like is to pull back with your feet without actually moving them. So push down through your feet, pull back on your mat, and that will hopefully help you engage your hamstrings a little bit more. We're looking for support on the front and back of our legs, and this pulling up on our knees and energetically pulling up our heels or pulling back with our heels can help us get that support in our legs, that strength of a mountain. 
Stretch your arms down at your sides. Straighten your arms. So really stretch through your elbow joint and straighten your arm. If you can hyperextend here, be conscious not to hyperextend your elbows, but to work for straight arms. Keep your triceps engaging. When you go into hyperextension, the tricep can start to turn off. Again, touch can help. So touching that muscle that wraps around the back of your arm. And then I also want you to engage your biceps slightly. This is a little bit harder to do than engaging your hamstrings. But imagine you're bending your elbows, so your thumb's coming up to your shoulder, but don't actually move it. And this might be able to get your hamstrings, or sorry, your biceps to fire up a little bit. Just looking for support on the up, upper front and back of our arms. When we stand in Tadasana, there are a couple of arm options. You can turn your palms forward. That gets a little bit of the external rotation of your upper arm. It can help you open your chest a little bit. And you can spread your fingers or bring your fingers together. I generally teach this though with your palms facing the sides of your body. And I generally teach this with fingers together. So turn your palms in to face the sides of your body, bring your fingers together. And you can practice what feels right for you. If it feels right for you to turn your palms forward, have your fingers together, or palms forward, fingers apart, or palms facing your side, fingers apart. There are a few options here, and it's up to you to find what feels right in your body. Move your head of your arm bones back, so move your shoulders back a little. Move your shoulders down your back slightly. This is to help open your chest and engage the muscles in your lower back, your middle back, and your upper back. Tone your belly, tighten up your butt, and stretch down through your tailbone. Look forward, lift through all four sides of your neck, but don't lift your chin up. Work to have your chin just level with the ground, so your gaze is forward. And steady your breath. Tadasana. This is mountain pose. So imagine a mountain. Imagine the stability and strength that's throughout the mountain and work to create that stability and strength in your whole body here. And relax. Ooh. See, Tadasana is a really active pose when it's done with full focus, with full consciousness, with full engagement. It's not just stand at the top of your mat. Thanks for practicing with me. Thanks for doing this yoga pose breakdown of Tadasana with me today. I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more of the details of mountain pose and how to create that strength and stability of a mountain in yourself. This video is part of a whole blog post on my website, adventureyogaonline.com. And you can find a direct link to the blog post in the description for this video. If you're looking to do a full class right now, there's a class right up there that I think you'd really enjoy. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, just click up over there on my picture and you can subscribe. If you give for this video a little thumbs up, that'd be great. And I will hopefully see you on the mat really soon. Namaste, homies.